welcome to the Star Trek New Horizons tutorial video. My name is Jamie Plays, and I'm going to be walking you through the user interface for Star Trek New Horizons when you're actually playing a game. There are some differences with the base game's Dolores, so if you're having trouble finding things, this video is definitely for you. Firstly, I would like to point out that your user interface might look slightly different to mine. This depends on which Star Trek New Horizons UI interface you are using. For this video, I will be using the Universal UI interface. Here are some other ways that it might look. This is the Romulan UI. This is the Cardassian UI. This is the Federation UI. This is the Dominion UI. This is the Borg UI. This is the Ferengi UI. This is the Klingon UI. Let's jump in. In the upper left hand side of the screen, you will see a logo. This logo changes depending on which empire you are playing as. As you can see, I'm currently playing as the Romulan Star Empire. If you click on this, you will have information about your empire, such as the government type and government traits, as well as any kind of empire traits, any empire modifiers, or similar information. More information about this can be found in a mini tutorial video that is dedicated to this window. This video is located in a playlist in the description below or also at the end of this video. To the right of the logo, we have the resources bar. This shows you the resources that you have and how much you're currently gaining or losing per month. If the number is in white, you are gaining this resource. If the number is in red, you are currently losing this resource. If the number is in yellow, such as this one, you have reached the maximum amount of this resource. From left to right, we have energy, minerals, food, supplies, alloys, influence, and unity. We also can see the research here. And if you click on this or hover over it, you can see the in three individual research types. Next to the research icon is the drop-down menu of the special resources in Star Trek New Horizons. Information on all of these resources and how they are used in the game can be found within a resource tutorial video in the tutorial playlist. Again, that is linked below, or also can be found at the end of this video. Continuing along, to the right, we have the symbol for administrative capacity. If the number is in red, you are over your capacity and you are being penalized for it, as I am right now. Next are the envoys that you have at your disposal and how many of them are currently working. The left hand number is the number that are currently employed or have assignments. The right hand number is the total number of envoys. The next icon shows the number of pops and the one to the right of that shows your starbase capacity and how many have been built. For example, I have a capacity of 19 and I have built 16 starbases. Next is the naval capacity, which shows how many points have been used and how many ship points you can support in total. For example, I am using 578 points here, and I have a total of 1820 points, or 1820. Next to these are trained officers and dilithium. These two can also be found under the special resources drop down menu at the very top. On the upper right hand side of the screen, we have the time and music controls. The time tells you what day it is in the game, whether the game is currently paused, and how fast it is going. For now, I will unpause the game. You can also increase or decrease the speed, which currently says normal, by pressing the plus buttons or the minus buttons. You can also press the plus keys and minus keys on your keyboard. For the music controls, the first button on the left is the play pause button. The second is the skip button to go to the next song in your playlist. And the third is the song selection button, which opens a list of music available to you. On the left hand side of the screen, we can see various buttons. Each of these opens a different menu. For this video, we will just be mentioning the menus. More information about each menu can be found in various tutorial videos in the tutorial playlist. The first is the contacts menu, which shows you your relations with other empires, the information you have gathered about them, and what they think of you. The second is the situation log. 
This is where you can find all of the information necessary about anomalies and events that are happening within the game, as well as your overall score. The third is the Marketplace menu. This is where you can buy and sell certain resources. The fourth is the Planets and Sectors menu. The fifth is the Expansion Planner or Colonization menu, which shows you a list of all discovered and colonizable planets. The sixth is the Policy menu. This shows a list of all of your empire's policies and how your empire reacts to certain information or in certain situations. The seventh menu is the Edicts menu, which allows you to activate strong empire-wide bonuses. Next is the Traditions menu, which allows you to activate strong empire-wide bonuses and even gain ascension perks. The ninth one is the Ship Designer window, where you can design your ships. Once you have them designed, you can add them and organize them into fleets with the 10th menu, which is known as the Fleet Manager. The 11th menu is the Research menu, where you can research various technologies as they become available to you. The 12th is the Factions menu, which shows the various factions and how they feel about your policies. The 13th is the Claims menu, which shows you which systems you are claiming from other empires. The 14th is the Species submenu. This is where you can set the status of each species within your empire. The 15th and the last menu is the Leaders menu, where you can recruit and view the various leaders in your empire. Finally, at the bottom is a lock button. This can toggle between locking the navigation bar in this view or unlocking it so that it will also show you the names here. Notice also that the first 10 menus can be accessed using the function keys on your Windows keyboard. At the top of the screen, under the resource toolbar, you will also see various icons that start under the supply icon and go to the right. These icons show you the current events within your empire and often disappear after a certain amount of time. Please make sure to keep a watch on this area to make sure you can react to the latest news within your playthrough. On the right hand side is the Outlier menu. This is a customizable window that shows you information on your planets, sectors if you have any, shipyards, star bases, military fleets, civilian ships, armies if you have any, any kind of observations that you're currently doing at the moment, and the factions as well. If you have any vassals or protectorates that are being integrated into your empire, these will also appear, typically at the bottom of the outlier menu. This menu can also be expanded or collapsed by using this button above. You can also customize this menu, especially in terms of reordering the planets or showing different options where it shows you different things and you can also hide these things. On the bottom left side of the screen is a series of buttons that act as shortcuts. By default, your starting capital planet is number one, the construction ship is number two, and your starting science ship is number three, down here. If one of these is destroyed, such as my two ships have, the shortcut will automatically be deleted. You can set these shortcuts by using the control and a number key from zero to nine. In the middle of your screen is your view of the galaxy. You have two main views, the galaxy view and the system view. You can zoom in and out of both the galaxy and system views. You can also use the W, A, S and D keys or the up, down, left and right arrow keys to pan the camera in both views. At the very bottom of your screen is information about where you currently are. If you are in a system, for example this one, it will tell you the name of the system and what it's being used for. Note I have no colonies here, therefore it is a mining system. If we go to Gamma Hydrae, for example, it will tell you that it is an empire colony. The game is also paused, so that is also shown down here. If you are in the galaxy view mode, this turns into a button that says close the galaxy map. Doing this returns you to the previous system you were looking at. Finally, on the bottom right are different view modes. These are best seen on the galaxy map. The order of these modes varies depending on the UI 
that you are currently using. However, generally they include the Empire map mode, which is what we see right now, the Relative Fleet Power map mode, which shows you your relative fleet power, the AI Attitude map mode, for example, the red I am not so friendly with and the green I am very friendly with, the Opinion map mode, again, green friendly, red not friendly, the Intel map mode, green lots of Intel, red very little Intel, then the Diplomatic map mode. In this case, I currently happen to have association status with a coalition, hence we have blue on this map as well. With people in red, those are people you are currently at war with, and grey is currently neutral. We then have the Empire map mode, which we have seen already, and uh, the Hyperlanes map mode, which does not work in Star Trek New Horizons, as viewing the Hyperlanes has been disabled. Finally, we can also look at our trade routes. So, for example, these are all the stations that are sending trade value to my capital planet, Romulus. We can look at the Sectors map mode, which I do not currently have. However, we can quickly set that by going to, for example, Romulus, and let's say Create New Sector. And this is now my sector, my Romulus sector. Finally, we also have the Unions map mode. So if I click this, you notice that several things have changed colour. For example, all of these are in the same coalition, therefore they are the same colour as the leader, who is currently the Delton Union. That's their pink colour. The same is true of the Federation here. So the United Federation of Planets is with the... Um, Oh, uh, for example, the Mempa sector, or they are also with the Rakari Third Imperium here. So all of that has become blue because the United Federation of Planets is currently the leader of that coalition. Finally, the remaining buttons are useful for searching for information. The first one will go to your capital planet. The second one you can use to search for systems, for known star systems specifically. The third one is for multiplayer chat, which is not available in a single player game. The fourth one is a help button, which opens a database where you can learn more about the game. This actually is an internet browser and is used on the internet um, with the Stellaris wiki. So note, some of this information will not be valid for Star Trek New Horizons. And finally, the last one shows us the main menu where we can save, load the game, change settings, exit to menu, or even directly to desktop, resume, or view the pri privacy policy from Paradox Interactive, the makers of this game. The final component of the UI that we need to talk about are the symbols for wars and coalitions. Both of these appear as circles. For example, here we are. I am currently at war with the Saurian League and their allies, and that appears here. This position may change depending on whether you are using a Star Trek UI or not, and also which one you, you are using. The coalition symbol also, which shows as a circle with a variety of stars in it, may also show in a variety of places. Those places are generally as follows. Here, here, or down here. Of these three places, down here and up here in the upper left are the most likely. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial video on the user interface for Star Trek New Horizons. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to write a comment. I will try to respond as quickly as possible. If you have any other questions about Star Trek New Horizons, please look at the tutorial videos in the playlist in the description below or linked at the end of this video. These tutorials are done in collaboration with Cornish Ratbeard. If you would like what you have watched, please remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to both of our channels. I hope I was able to help you, and we also hope to see you around. Bye for now!